Welcome back to Business Analytics for Decision Makers. Today we're going to cover time series forecasting. Our lesson objectives for today are first to cover what is time series data, and then we're going to cover three types of time series forecasting models. The first will be moving averages, then we'll look at weighted moving averages, and finally we'll look at exponential smoothing. When I introduce each of the forecasting models, we'll also go through how to develop it in Excel. So time series data, what is it? Well, it's a sequence of data points where each measurement is taken as time progresses. So if you think of a new business and it started up in January, what they could record, for example, is their first month's sales in January. And then when February ends, they can record their sales for February. They can do this for March, they can do this for April, and they'll keep doing it for every month. So now we're all the way out in September. And they can use this information maybe to forecast what their sales are likely to be for October so that when they put in their October order, they're not too shy. They definitely don't want to be shy, but they also don't have an overage, so they're not stocking a whole bunch of extra materials. So moving average models are one way to generate that forecast. And what a moving average model does is it predicts the next period by taking an average of previous periods. So if we look at that earlier data, and I want to forecast my sales in October, a two-period moving average model would average August and September. Now a note on notation here, F sub T plus one will be our forecast for the upcoming period because it's one step ahead of where we currently stand at time T. The current period, A sub T is the actual sales for this period, and then A sub T minus one was actual sales for the preceding month, so August or the preceding period. And what's also nice to note is this is really a weighted average, except the weights are perfectly balanced. So the average is the same as taking half of a sub t and half of a sub t minus 1. How does this change if, for example, I would like to use a three-period moving average model? Well, in that case, I'm gonna, my forecast is going to be based on July, August, and September, and averaging in those months. And this is, again, the same as weighting, except this time my weights would be a third. So how do we do this in Excel? To follow along as we work through Excel during this lesson, if you go to the forecasting and regression page on the website and you scroll to the bottom where homework and section materials are located, today we're going to be using the Excel Lesson 6 and 7 template as well as we will for next lesson. Go ahead and open it and download it, and then you can open up the Excel file and follow along. So when you open up the Excel template, what you're going to see is this fighter maintenance demand data. And so this is hypothetical data for a new fighter maintenance squadron. And every month they've been collecting how often they have to do maintenance on the aircraft. Uh, when looking at this data, we can see we've got 12 months and it doesn't appear that there are any errors. So what can often happen is you'll have something like this where someone fat fingered a number and they're going to have to go back into the archives and see if you can get clean data. What also tends to happen is maybe people hit a digit an extra time, and again, you're going to have to do the same work, kind of footwork to either fix or correct that data. In this case, we've got a nice clean data set, so we're ready to make our forecast. So for a two-period moving average forecast, what's the first period we can forecast? Well, we can't forecast the first period because we wouldn't have had any data. In the second period, we would only have one period's data, so again, we can't do a two-period moving average. The third period would be the first opportunity where we could have made a forecast on the data. So our forecast in the third period would simply be the averages of periods one and two, so 11. How do we tell Excel to do this? Well, equals, right, because we're going to give it an equation, and Excel has a neat function called average. So if we type in average, and then we select the data we wanted to average, Excel will go ahead and do that computation for us. How do we then make, so we've got our forecast for the third period, which was 11. How do we get our forecast for the fourth period? Well, we'd have to average 12 and 16. One of the nice things about Excel is the equations use relative references unless we tell it otherwise, and we'll go into that in more depth later. But if we go ahead and drag this down, it's going to correctly compute all of the averages for us. So in period four, it looked at months two and three. 
forecast of period 13, we only needed to look at 11 and 12, and we can see that it did that. 21 and 19 averages 20. So let's go ahead and preserve our formatting, keeping our decision variable row green. And so we've created a two period moving average forecast. That's all we're going to do with this tab today. Let's go ahead and move to the three period moving average forecast tab. And for a three period moving average, what's the first period we can forecast? Well, it's the fourth period, right? So it's the first time I would have three periods preceding it. I'd use the average function again, but this time I'm going to look at the three preceding months. And I can go ahead and make my 13 month prediction, which would look at 10, 11, and 12. And after dragging our equation down, so here's our forecast for month 13. Pretty simple, pretty quick, but a very good forecast if we're only if we believe that things are short-term trends. Now we're going to cover weighted moving average forecast. And weighted moving average forecast are the general case of the moving average forecast. So for example, let's consider as a business you believe that the most recent month is a better predictor of the upcoming period, except you still believe you want to maintain that information from a previous period. So maybe you want to weight the current period by 80% and the previous period by, for example, 20% to generate your forecast for the next period. That would be a weighted moving average. So a weighted moving average defined as the forecast of the coming period is a weighted average of the end previous periods. The sum of the weights across your different periods are going to add to one. So how does this look? So we can take that same sales data as before. And if I want to forecast our coming month, it'll be October. And if we have a two period weighted moving average, I'm going to weight September by some amount and August by some amount to generate my October forecast. So I'll add this W sub T for my current period and this W sub T minus one for the period before that. Where W sub T and W plus W sub T minus one will sum to one. Now, how does this change if I do a three period weighted moving average? Well, then I'm going to be looking at July, August, and September, and each one of those months can have its own unique weight. But again, preserving our weight summing to one, right, we are going to go ahead and enforce that rule. If our weights do not sum to one, if they sum to more to one, what we're going to be predicting is general growth. And if our weights were to sum to less than one, we would be forecasting a decrease. When we force them to sum to one, it allows us to say, preserve whatever trend is existing in the data. So how do we do this in Excel? So if we come back to our Excel template, we can go to the two period weighted moving average tab, and we see that things have changed a little while our data is still the same. And the first thing we need to decide is what do we want to weight the current period? So we will use that 80% I talked about hypothetically. And what do we want to wait the preceding period? And so it's necessarily going to make it sum to 1. So we could type in 0.2 and know that it sums to 1. Or we could soft code it so it's 1 minus our weight for the current. Now, again, if I am doing a two-period weighted moving average, I can't forecast the first period because I wouldn't have two periods of data. And the second, I'd only have one. So the first forecast I could make would be the third period. And my forecast is going to be equal to 0.8 times the current period plus 0.2 times the period prior. Now, in this case, if I just were to drag my equation down, these would go ahead and move, right? I know these references will move down, but these references I don't want to move. And so to tell Excel I want a reference not to move, what I go ahead and do is I can lock a cell. And to lock a reference, to make it an absolute reference in Excel, what you do is you put dollar signs in front of it. So you can hit the F4 key, or you can physically type in your dollar signs. So now I've locked my blue and my purple cell, in my example, my weights, 
then I can go ahead and drag my forecast down. So my forecast for period 13 is going to look at periods 11 and 12, and it's going to take 19 and multiply it by 0.8, which is what we've done, and it's going to take 21 and multiply it by 0.2. And that gives us a forecast of 19.4 for the 13th period. Keeping our coloring. So now we've done a two period weighting moving average forecast. How would we adapt this for a thir three period case? And in this case, again, we have to pick our weights. So maybe I want to do 60% for the current period and then 30% for the period prior and maybe just 10% the remainder for looking two periods back. So in this case, I won't be able to forecast until the fourth period because I need three periods of data. And my first forecast would be that 0.6, which I would lock, multiplied by the current period, which would be period three, plus 0.3. Again, I'd lock it because it's a weight multiplied by the 12. So one period back. And then I would add 0.1 locked times two periods back. I can take this equation and drag it down, and then again, go to habit, right? Our forecast is for the 13th period, is to check it. And so it should be 0.6 times 19, so blue times green, plus 0.3 times 21, so purple times dark red, D6 times B16, and then 0.1 times 19, so bright green times orange, and it looks like our equation's good. I could check the math by hand very quickly, but 19.6 seems about right, and so let's go ahead and say that Excel got this correct. And so now we've covered weighted moving averages and how to generate those forecasts in Excel. The final model we're going to cover today is the exponential smoothing model. And an exponential smoothing forecast is a weighted average of the actual value in the current period and our old forecast for the current period. So mathematically, what does this look like? Well, f sub t plus 1, our forecast, is going to be equal to alpha times the actual value in the current period plus 1 minus alpha times our forecast for the current period. We pick our alpha and we can pick it so that it's any number between 0 and 1, where if it's 0, what we're saying is our forecast for the next period is going to be exactly equal to our forecast for the current period, whereas if we pick our alpha to be 1, we're saying our forecast for the next period is going to be equal to the actual observed value in the current period. In order to make an exponential forecast, we have to seed the model. And by seeding it, what I mean is we need to generate a first period forecast. And so we say our forecast for the first period is equal to our actual value in the first period. What does this look like in our example data? Well, in January, our forecast for January would have been what we observed in January. Now we're ready to make our first real forecast, which would be for our second period. And we're going to say our forecast in the second period is equal to alpha times our actual in the first period plus 1 minus alpha times our forecast in the first period. Since our forecast for the first period was really our actual in the first period, our forecast for the second period will end up being exactly equal to what we observed in the first period, because alpha plus 1 minus alpha sums to 1. So now we've got our forecast for February in our example data. How do we forecast our third period? Well, it's going to be equal to alpha times our actual in the second period, plus 1 minus alpha times our forecast for the second period. Since our forecast for the second period is equal to A1, what we're going to see is our forecast for the third period is actually equal to the information that we've observed already. So our actual in the first period and an actual in the second. So in our example, we've now observed our February data. We've got our old forecast in blue, and our new forecast for March in red is going to lie somewhere between what we observed in February the green and our old forecast for February the blue based on that alpha value we picked with a alpha closer to 1 making that forecast closer to the green dot whereas if our alpha was closer to 0 it would move our red forecast closer to the blue. Our forecast for the fourth period will be equal to alpha times our actual in the third plus 1 minus alpha times our forecast in the third 
if we substitute in for our forecast for the third, what we'll see is that our forecast for the fourth period actually contains information about our actual date, observed data from the first, second, and third periods. So once we've observed March's data, we've got our old forecast for March and our new forecast for April is going to lie somewhere between what we observed in March and our old forecast for March. This proceeds as well for our fifth period forecast. So we would have our original forecast for April, our old forecast for April, what we observed in April, the green, and then our new forecast, the red, will lie somewhere between our old forecast, the blue, and our observed actual for that period, the green. Now, when we get all the way out to where we lie in September and we're forecasting for October, what does this mean for October's forecast? Well, October's forecast is actually going to contain information about all the data that we've observed to date. So, how do we do this exponential smoothing model in Excel? So, to create our exponential smoothing model in Excel, let's go to our exponential tab and let's start by picking our alpha. So, in this case, let's make our alpha maybe 0.6. Our forecast for the first period is simply what we observed in our first period. Our forecast for the second period is our first real forecast. And what it's going to be is alpha times our actual plus 1 minus alpha times our forecast. Now, one of the cool things about Excel, right, we, could we would need to lock our alpha values, but we can also name cells. So let's click on that alpha value that we picked. And up in the top left, we can type in the word alpha. And so now this is a named reference cell. So I can call it by alpha. So if we click on it, we see the name's called alpha. So in my forecast, I can replace that C6 value with alpha. And when you have a named reference cell, it'll automatically lock it. So to update and create all of our forecasts, we can now just drag down. So our forecast for period 13 should be our alpha value times the actual in period 12 plus 1 minus alpha times our old forecast for period 12. So we can fix our colors and we've created an exponential forecast for period 13. We covered a lot today, so let's review what we covered. We started by introducing time series data, which is data that's collected sequentially over time, so it has this historical element of how we're progressing. We then covered some simple time series forecasting models, starting with moving averages and how we would create them in Excel, and then we move to the more general weighted moving average, and finally, the exponential smoothing model. Next time, we're going to look at metrics for how we would compare these different models to select the one that is most likely to produce the most accurate forecast for our business or situation. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.